Take a little snooze here. Slept out here last night. I like my nice little bed here with my survival blanket on there. And uh, my bed is, I'll show you the bed. The bed's filled with reeds for a mattress. Very nice and comfortable. Let me show you how I, more particularly uh, today, I want to show you how I uh, tied this framework together. So you can see a, like a simple knot that that I use. Um, I use this knot all the time. It's one of the most frequent knots I use and uh, I didn't learn it in Boy Scouts. Alright, so what I've done here, I'm, I just tell you kind of quickly about the shelter itself. Um, this, uh, the uh, lean-to part is a poncho or PSSL and uh, this is the new, uh, our new w WL Woodland uh, clear coat. Very, very lightweight, almost as lightweight as uh, sil nylon. And uh, so I'm just using that. I've got it strung up because even though it's, it can be a poncho, a hammock, or a tarp, or whatever. So I got it strung up to be kind of my lean to deal. And, um, and then I've made this bed out of these logs. I'm not going to detail, that'll be a whole separate video really detailing the detailing all that. But I just kind of show you how I put it together and just kind of the primary knot that I used to uh, quickly put this together using very little cord. Right, my, my pillow is just made out of the broken ends of the reeds. It's kind of bundled up. And then uh, you don't really have to, but I don't usually do this, but using reeds is easier just to kind of make sure everything stays together just to tie in bundles. Right, so the way the way this uh, this uh, mattress basically works is it's the idea is to get you up off the ground so you're not in the cold and the wet especially the in the winter time or colder weather and if you have a fire out front the heat can penetrate underneath here so you get a little bit of a radiant heat kind of coming back to there and there's a ton of different things that also has to do with that but <clears throat> The idea is to get you a bed to make your sleep out camping just as comfortable as if you were at home in your own bed. And so we have just a, a framework. It can be uh, any kind of sticks, whatever you got laying around, whatever you can find. But I have two bottom ones, one on each side, a little bit wider than shoulder width. The foot end can actually be pretty narrow. I just left it wide. But <clears throat> And then you have a cross piece here at the head. And you have another cross piece here behind your knees. And you don't really need one on the end, but I put one there anyway just to stabilize it. Because your feet don't really need much of anything down there. <clears throat> and anyway, so the design is, is this gives you give right here where you need it between your head and your knees. Whatever happens beyond your knees doesn't really matter. You just want to be able to have a little bit of give right in here. So, so everything here is just laid out and then we lash it together. And uh, let me just show you how we lash this together. This uh, whole frame is lashed together with a jam knot. Okay, so I'm just using uh, I'm just using scraps of cord here, and that's kind of ideal for this little situation. But one of the one of the advantages of using a jam knot is uh, we've got a bunch of stuff to put together. A jam knot requires probably the least of about any knot uh, to lash something together, and you can lash it together very, very strongly. What we do, the very first thing, is we just tie a little overhand knot in the end, just like that. And that is what you call a stopper knot, because the other knot we put on here, if we don't have that on there, it'll run right off the end of the cord. So we have to have a stopper knot on there. An overhand works good. You could use a figure eight or something if you wanted to. Now, the next thing we do is we just go around the pieces that we're going to secure. So here I have a bottom, a bottom, a bottom uh, stretcher and a top stretcher and then in between there is our cross piece here. This is the one that goes behind my knees. So all I do is bring my cord up around there 
and I just go around this end here, I just go around there, and then just to kind of, I'm going to hold it up just to show you so I don't lose track of things. So what we did here is we just tied, a, basically just tied a slip knot. And we have a stopper knot in the end to, to keep the knot from slipping off. Then you just pull that up, okay? So what happens here now, in order to be able to, in order to be able to tight, to lock this knot once we, uh, just that knot itself we can pull down pretty strongly, but the knot will actually uh, not hold in place very long if we don't lock it. So since we're going around something curved here, we won't be able to get the rope back underneath there to tie a half hitch to to lock that. So what we do is what we do is I just take this end here, just tuck it underneath there like that, and just pull on it. And you notice how that knot there just turned over. So what we've done here, if you look at it, is this knot here is acting like a pulley. So when I when I pull on this, see I'm pulling through there, which what that does is that doubles the amount of uh, force I can apply to this. Uh, so it allows me, if I really got on something really tight, I could, if I used a stick or something, I'd practically break this parachute cord. I could tighten it so tight. So now, all I'm going to do is just keep pulling in on that. And I tighten that in so it's just as tight as it can be. Then I bring my end of the cord through there and then just pull that up tight like that with a half hitch. And that's all I got to do. That knot will stay just fine like that. And I can just take a knife and cut that off if I want to. And that's how you tie the jam knot. Okay, we're going to quickly go through this again. So I tie an overhand knot, a stopper knot in the end. And I go around my logs or whatever I've got here and then I take the end that I put the stopper knot in I've gone, gone around this piece and I come up through the loop I just made so I made a slip knot okay now I can tighten it just a little bit but before I get too far I want to make sure I pull that in through there so I have an end that I can use to uh, lock this thing with now notice when I pull on this, this knot here will start, it'll start running up closer and closer, the tighter I pull it, and now see it ran right tight against there, give it one last tug, I could actually even put my foot up on here, pull on this, I could just, I could torque the heck out of this thing, but I don't really need to for this, and uh, and then all I do is now just draw that down, snap it with a half hitch. I can cut that off right there. I'm good to go with a jam knot. Now I could use this framework if I wanted to as a, like the top section, as a, I could set it up so I could use it as a stretcher if I left the ends a little bit long so some two people could carry somebody out. <clears throat> but that's a whole other video. But anyway, there's the jam knot. Very simple, very easy to do. It's one of the most frequent knots I use, and I've only used I've only used about uh, you know maybe a couple feet of cord to tie this. Whereas if I used a lashing or something, I might use uh, six or eight or ten feet of cord to tie this off. So it saves a lot of cordage, and uh, it's very very effective.